Hey everyone, um, due to popular demand and it looks like maybe a hole in my videos, uh, I wanted to go ahead and show you how we can calculate out our p-values when we are only given sample statistics. Um, the p-values are super easy when we have the raw data, our software will do it for us. Um, but we also might just have the sample statistics and we might want to calculate out our p-value like this. Okay, so I've got two basic scenarios. I've got one where we have a one sample proportion, and then I have another one uh, where we have a one sample mean. So we're actually, we're gonna start off with this one sample mean scenario. And obviously there'd be like a word problem built around this, but suppose that we have a scenario where the hypothesized mean is 10, we have like our X bar of 12, our standard deviation, our sample standard deviation S is three, and our sample size was five. We were approximately normal, so we've got an alpha, and then we have our null and alternative hypothesis as uh, set up here. Okay, so the first thing that we need to do is we need to determine, okay, what type of data are we dealing with? This one's pretty easy because, you know, it tells us that we're dealing with means, um, but let's go ahead and grab Prezi, so that we can look at this. So this flowchart is connected onto our website. It's inside of the stat toolbox, so you can go there and look for it. So we start off with this first question. This first question is, what am I testing? We're dealing with numerical means. How many? Well, or this section, we're only dealing with one. We're only dealing with kind of one mean at a time and comparing it back to a hypothesized value. The next question was, is it normal? So we had a small sample size, but it did say that it's approximately normal. Uh, is there like a one-to-one -one relationship to allow this to be matched pairs? And there wasn't, so we're just down to here. And do we know the sigma or s? And we knew s because that's what was given. And so here are our uh, tests that we're going to do. We're going to do a one sample t-test for a mean. Okay, so this is the equation that we need. This x bar minus mu divided by s divided by the square root of n. And that'll get us our test statistic. Now, most people at this point have been actually doing a really good job getting our test statistic, but let's go ahead and just grab that real quick. We'll know that t equals, and let's just do this guy real quick. So we're going to do x bar minus our hypothesized mean divided by s divided by the square root, square root of our n. That should give us our t value. Okay, most people are getting really good at calculating out that t's, but I have lots of people then ask like, okay, now what? What do I do now with my t uh, in order to get my p value? Okay, this is actually really easy. At this point in time, what we do is we go into our commander, we go to our basic statistics, and this is just a, prob a probability question that we're asking. So it's just our random variables, continuous distributions, t distribution. We go down to our probabilities, and then we need to put in our variable value, which is just right now is going to be our test statistic. And our degrees of freedom, which is n minus one, so we can just put in four. Now we're looking at what do we want? Do we want the lower tail or do we want the upper tail? Now this one I particularly did a little tricky, so I had a not equals to. When we do a not equals to, the p-value that we calculate actually needs to be doubled. And I will try to show that in just a second. but if we're doing a two-tailed test, we know to do an upper or lower based upon what our test statistic is. If the test statistic was negative, we'd do lower. Since it's positive, we're going to do upper. And then I'm going to go ahead and click OK. So that's going to give me this p-value. This p-value is actually wrong. What I need to do is I need to multiply that p-value by 2. And so this is the p-value that I have. p-value is going to be equal to, oops, sorry about that. There we go. Okay, so we need a little quick primer about exactly what does the p-value mean again. So remember, here's the definition of our p-value. So it's given given the null hypothesis, so the H naught is true, this is the probability that our probability should we attempt 
this experiment again that we would get as or more extreme of a result. All right, so this p-value is letting us know, it's like, how weird is this? Like, if we were to run this experiment again, would we get, like, how odd would it for us to get a result this weird or weirder? All right, so I need a picture now real quick. So what I'm going to do is, let's go ahead and grab a drawing application real quick. Okay. Here we go. Okay, so remember that when we are doing this, oops, there we go. Oh, let's see if it'll let me draw. There we go. Okay, so we have this approximately normal distribution and it's centered about our mu naught. Alright, so that, that's where it's centered about. And when we do a two-tailed test, we wind up putting our alpha term into these two tails. So we do a little bit over there, and we do a little bit over there. Now, when we get an x-bar term, let's say that we get our x-bar, and it pops up right here. Okay, so when we did our t, uh, when we calculated out our t-statistic, what the t-statistic actually did was it calculated out how many standard deviations away from the mean we were. And this time it was like 1.4. Okay, now when we're doing a two-tailed test, the thing about it is like weird can be either direction. It could also be this direction of negative 1.4. Four. Okay, so from our x bar, here's the reason why we've got to double this thing. And the reason is, is because, so when we used our commander to find out our p-value, we took it from this critical point of where our t was, and we found the area of the circles. But because it could also be the other direction, which would be equal extreme weirdness, just in the other direction, then we also have to find the area of these weird colored circles going to the other side. So that's why we have to then double our p-value if and only if we have a alternative hypothesis that is not equal, um, that is not equals to. Now, our commander, when we do it with the raw data, already does this for you. But uh, if we're doing it by hand, and we're doing this two-tailed test with a not equal symbol. We have to remember that what our p-value is, what we do, we've got to double it so that we get the correct one. Now, basically from here on out, I'm going to be giving you the raw data, and so the R commander will take care of it for you, but just so you know, that's what's happening. Okay, over here, let's do a one sample proportion test. So let's go once again back to Prezi, and we're going to zoom out, and we're going to start again right back at the top. So, oops, sorry about that. What am I testing? This time, since we're dealing with p's and pi's, we know that we're dealing with categorical data or proportions. And how many? We're only dealing with one right now. And the question is, is it normal? So we have to know if we have at least 15 successes and 15 failures. And if we do, then we're able to do this central limit theorem um, and use a one sample z test for a proportion. Okay, so that's really handy for us. So now it's just p minus pi divided by the square root of pi naught times pi naught complement divided by n. Okay, we can do this. And once again, people have been doing actually a pretty good job on this one. So I'm just going to say equals, and then we can go ahead and type in our parts so that we've got this p minus pi naught and we're going to divide by the square root of pi naught times, and I'm going to have to do one minus pi naught because I didn't take the complement, that's okay. And I can divide by the sample size, 
and I can hit enter. Okay, so now I've got this as my Z value. Okay, so now that I've got a Z, I can come up here and I can go to our basic statistics, random variables, continuous, and when we're dealing with Z, we're dealing with a normal distribution, and we can now go to normal probabilities. Okay, so in this one, the variable value, once again, is just our Z value right here, paste it in there, and the mean and the standard deviation, leave it alone. And the reason is, is because when we are using these Z scores, we're doing what is called, we have standardized our results, and so we need to use the mean of zero and standard deviation of one. So if you've tried to play around with those, that might be some of the reasons why you're having issues with getting your p-value. And the variable value uh, is just that z-score, or if we were dealing with t's, then we could do our t-probabilities. But proportions always use the z. Okay, now the question is, do I use the lower or the upper? And that is all based upon what is your alternative hypothesis? And so since it says less than the, the hypothesized value of 0.7, I want to choose my lower tail. Okay, and I just go ahead and click OK. And here I'm given this p-value. And I can just go ahead and type in p-value equals, and paste that in. Oops, sorry about that. Paste it in. And there's our p-value. So anyhow, I hope that that helps clear up some of the confusion of how to calculate the p-values. It looks like everybody was doing a great job on getting the test statistics, but we're getting a little bit hung up on the p-values. So anyhow, that is how you use R Commander uh, to get those p-values when you're only given the raw data. So best of luck to you all, and I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.